Happy holidays, Griot fam. And this is The Hill with April Ryan. Let's get right to it. We start today with another blow for black America. A federal court has effectively blocked civil rights groups from suing under the Voting Rights Act. This action would weaken the already gutted historic 1965 law. The plaintiffs are likely to appeal the ruling and is expected to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. In 2013, the high court ended the preclearance portion of the law in the Shelby v. Holder case. Biden officials from the State Department, National Security Council, and the Director of National Intelligence recently traveled to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Rwanda. They made the trip to secure a security commitment from both leaders to de-escalate tensions in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. The International Organization for Migration has described the situation there as the largest internal displacement and humanitarian crisis in the world, with thousands of civilians killed and hundreds of thousands fleeing to neighboring Uganda. The Biden administration says it plans to monitor the situation and welcome steps towards de-escalation, as well as plans to support diplomatic and intelligence engagements between both countries. We've talked a lot about the challenges to diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, especially after the U.S. Supreme Court decision overturning affirmative actions and admissions at private education facilities. I spoke recently with Renika Moore of the ACLU Racial Justice Program about the DEI challenges ahead since the ruling. So what we're seeing is in the House, we've seen a number of um, amendments to bills introduced that are trying to cut DEI efforts at the federal level, um, but they're not getting any traction. What we are seeing at the state level, though, is we're seeing efforts um, by red states to try to defund DEI efforts, and that's in the form of cutting agencies that are committed to DEI. That's that's in the F in in terms of companies and um, programs that are really looking at racial equity and trying to stop the practice of examining racial racial equity. And so we know that cities that have committed, like we saw this in Milwaukee, um, that have committed to addressing racial inequality, are being attacked for those efforts. And so that's what we need to push back on. Alfonso David is the president and CEO of the Global Black Economic Forum. He is also the lawyer representing the Fearless Fund and their appeal after a court challenge from conservative Edward Blum. Blum wanted to shut down the Fearless Fund's efforts to give financial support and grants to black women businesses. David says this is a very critical time we all must pay attention to. This fight is so critically important. This goes to the heart of economic opportunity and economic freedom. We know in this country, unfortunately, that so many people are shut out of the economic opportunities that exist because of their race, because of their gender. And so if we don't stand up and fight these efforts, we will see a fundamental dismantling of economic opportunity and economic freedom that should be available to all of us. If you didn't know, this is my favorite time of year. It's official. The holiday season is here. And to celebrate, President Biden spent his 81st birthday pardoning not one, but two Thanksgiving turkeys. The birds, each weighing at least 40 pounds, are escaping a dinner table and instead will live the rest of their lives free of a fork and knife. The pardon gobbler's names are Liberty and Bell. Mm. And while we're in the holiday spirit on the Hill, First Lady Jill Biden received the official White House Christmas tree this week. The tree will sit in the blue room of the White House on the state floor. Thanks for joining us for this holiday edition of the Hill, where we amplify the news for us and about us. Happy gobble gobble time. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Peace, peace and peace.